Tonight on Bayou Time, we have a lot to talk about. We have Chief Scott Silveri of the Thibodeau Police Department, and he's going to be joined by Lieutenant Todd Gagnard and Officer Joseph Perio. They're going to talk about the National Night Out Against Crime, which also took place, and we had footage from the Homa area, as you might recall. Then, to your health with Terrebonne General Medical Center, Laura Poole and Julia Berg, and Nickel State University, and an update on Tropical Storm Emily. It's all next. Deep in the heart of the bayou, we are gathered here tonight. Now it's time for action, cause our lives are on the line. Tonight we'll do our very best to break through all the bureaucratic mess. The time has come tonight, cause it's bayou time. Show what Louisiana's all about. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Bayou Time. I'm Martin Falls. You see behind me, city of Thibodeau. We're going to have the police chief on in a few short minutes. But first, let's take a look at Tropical Storm Emily if we can and we'll give you some of the predictions and of course it seems to be changing uh, ever so often but here we go anyway position 16.9 north 71.0 west the winds still 50 miles per hour but those gusts have been raised to 65 miles per hour the movement west at 14 miles per hour and of course there's your pressure it is located 60 miles southeast of Albiata, Dominican Republic. And if we can change those maps and show you what it looks like, uh, as you can tell, a lot of shearing has been taking place in this storm, which is forcing it to continue to move a little bit more westward. If it were to wrap around on this storm, that's what would make it start making its little move northwest. But that has not occurred. So therefore, the models have changed a little bit and there is the cone I call it the cone of uncertainty because that's what it is but keep in mind every time they come up with a cone 84 percent of the time it falls within that cone so the probability is pretty high that this storm will follow that cone but the uncertainty comes in the models and there are the models which Jason Serenier has put on the screen for us here at HTV and a lot of those models, more than yesterday, place this storm in the Gulf of Mexico. That does not mean that it's going there. I'm not trying to panic anybody. But what I'm trying to do with everyone is for you to get ready. This is the time you need to start getting ready. This is the time you need to start getting prepared. Don't wait till next week. Don't go get batteries for your flashlights next week or bottles of water don't rush at the last minute like we all like to do get your cars fueled up it's a good week to do it of course it's a little hot but you're gonna have to trudge through it and school starting also next week so don't wait i know you're trying to get your kids ready for school but take a deep breath make a list fuel up your car and we'll have the police chief talk a little bit about that in a second too uh, get all your stuff ready at your house. Get a bunch of snacks ready, non-perishable food items that you could use. Uh, have a little cash on hand. I know some, some of you cash probably a little tight at times, but try to keep a little bit on the side for when you need it. And remember, batteries, flashlights, and all that type of stuff. Now, don't get alarmed. I'm not telling you it's coming this way, but it's good to be prepared in case we need to do that. So we're going to keep an eye. Bring the models up one more time, Jay, if we can, and we'll, uh, we'll give you a look at it. That's just so that you can start being alerted. Uh, we don't want you at the last minute to say that we didn't tell you or warn you. There is a chance that we could have a tropical storm or hurricane uh, brewing or threatening uh, sometime soon, but we're going to keep an eye on it and let you know right here on HTV10. All right, what we're going to do now, we're going to jump to some news before we bring on the police chief of Thibodeau with some of his officers and a tragedy involving someone trying to steal some copper 
from some equipment. So we'll start off and then National Night Out Against Crime. Let's roll it in. If you're one of the many residents in the Bayou Blue, Coteau Road, and East Toma areas, you are awakened by the lack of power in your area just after 1 a.m. Energy officials in the Terrebonne Parish Sheriff's Office say a man broke into an energy substation and sent thousands, including the HTV transmitter, into darkness. We received a notice from uh, at our dispatch center uh, that there was a fault at our Koto substation where uh, the power, the electrical power to the substation had shut down. So one of our uh, servicemen was dispatched uh, early this morning, sometime after 1 a.m., to uh, investigate the loss of power and unfortunately uh, discovered that there was a, a public fatality. There was an individual in the substation yard that was uh, appeared to be deceased and he immediately notified officials. Officials say the man was attempting to steal a wire to sell it for scrap metal. Upon deputy's arrival, they observed a white male subject on the ground with some uh, wire cutters by his hand. Appeared to have been trying to um, cut the ground wire to steal copper wire. Uh, the sub subject was unresponsive because of electrocution. Um, uh, the subject was later identified as uh, Timothy Lewis, white male, age 34 of Homa. Uh, Mr. Lewis is known to have had a, a pretty long criminal history and a history of drug abuse. Energy officials and the Terrebonne Parish Sheriff's Office say anyone trying to steal wires putting themselves in danger with the act. Electrical wire looks harmless, just like when, when wires are laying down on top of a roadway. Uh, you think there's nothing there that'll hurt you. But, uh, you know, the thousands and thousands of volts that goes to those wires will, will, will kill a person instantly. And uh, it's something a lot of people don't realize. Just like you hear on radio and see on television, don't monkey around power lines, there's a reason for it. Uh, the, the, the power inside those power lines is, is, is enormous, and people just don't understand the, 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 what, the, what, it could, what it can really do to you. One new service that energy officials are suggesting residents do is to subscribe to outage alerts where they can be notified of an outage affecting their area via cell phone. If you haven't signed up, there's a feature online uh, called My Account Anywhere uh, through www.entergy.com and customers are able to receive notices of outages if they sign up for this feature. And it was a helpful tool this morning if you have a cell phone uh, and you sign up your cell phone number, you can receive notice of what's happening with the outage, why the outage is occurring, and how long we estimate that it will be before your power is restored. In more police news, area residents team up to unite against crime in the annual Night Out Against Crime. We start off in Homa with a few block parties around town. Okay, right now we're out at Dumas Auditorium right now, which is another one of our locations for the Neighborhood Watch and National Night Out Against Crime. It's such a fantastic opportunity to be participating in this with the police department. Uh, right now we're out with Councilman Orlando Williams, who's a big proponent of Neighborhood Watch and uh, assisting the police department with funding in, in an attempts to uh, make the Neighborhood Watch uh, greater and successful and, and, and funded uh, with different grants. Uh, Councilman Williams, uh, would you ever have dreamed years ago that when this started that we'd be at where we're at today? No, actually I didn't. Um, I was, I'm very thankful for the support I've received for HPD over the years, but the problem was to try to get the community involved. And I'm so pleased because this is the second year in a row that we've had a successful event. This is the second one I've been to today. I have about three more to go to, but I'm pretty pleased with the turnout. I'm, I just want to say thank y'all because people are beginning to trust law enforcement. And when we first started all this, that's what it was all about, to bring trust back in the community. So I'm very thankful. I think it's always a good thing when neighbors come together for one that's a good thing to right. begin with but when you do have crime that we have in Terrebonne Parish primarily in the drug arena and unfortunately we have a lot of domestic violence it's good for neighbors to watch out for their neighbors an event such as this puts you know emphasis and focus on on that uh, segment neighbors coming together to help each other all right to get to know their neighbors get to see the faces and it's always good. You guys do a great job, but y'all cannot be everywhere, be everywhere all the time. Puts an extra set of eyes out That's for us, and it's absolutely. a great exchange of information. Yes. Once again, we're back at uh, Roberta Grove Neighborhood Watch for National Night Out Against Crime. I have with me Miss Mary Oquan is the captain for this area. And Miss Oquan, is there anything you'd like to say to the public about Neighborhood Watch? And I think that uh, one thing I've learned since. Um, taking over this job is that neighborhood watch programs are real effective. The citizens have to buy into it, the neighbors have to work at it, 
But when you get organized and you're together, it definitely, we have lowered our crime rate. We've cut it in half. We then traveled to Thibodeau and visited a few block parties there. Uh, we're over here at Thibodeau Police Department. We've got everything from food and games to music and uh, the Thibodeau Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, State Police participating. Uh, we have three other locations in the city. Uh, and obviously the, the reason is to bring the community together with law enforcement, just to show a unified front in our, in our efforts to, to combat crime and provide a, a safe community for the city of Thibodeau. We've had a super turnout. We've got great weather, a little sunny, but uh, better than rain any day. So uh, we've had a great turnout. We appreciate everybody's participation. Anytime you bring the community together with law enforcement, it's got to be a communal effort. And it's got to be a partnership with us in the community. Uh, no one on their own can do it alone. So, uh, so it really is it's vital. But what it does, it gives us a chance to meet everybody in the city, uh, those folks that we may not meet on a regular basis, uh, in a real informal setting. And uh, a lot of kids out here, as you see, in face painting. And so it really does. It really cements that relationship between the community and the law enforcement agencies. Man, you were so positive on that, Chief Scott Silvera. Welcome back to the program. And uh, I like the way you just jump into that, that microphone. Oh, I'm excited about the community, excited about Night Out Against Crime. Like, Great night. I like that. And we're going to talk a lot about that, but you brought some guests tonight, so I want you to introduce them. And uh, I know they're waiting for you to talk good about them. So. Oh, I always talk good about it. You know, Martin, you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with. Right. And when I was fortunate enough to have the job as the Chief of Police in the city of Thibodeau, uh, I inherited guys like, like Lieutenant Todd Gagnard. Uh, Todd's originally from Metairie, played college baseball at Nichols. Uh, the city of Thibodeau was fortunate enough to have him remain in the city, uh, and where he's risen to the rank of lieutenant, one of my shift commanders, and uh, he supervises the field training officer program. Uh, seated next to him is Officer Joe Perio. Uh, Joe tells me he was all state basketball player in Terrebonne. Uh, and he's also a, a planking expert, from what I understand. Yeah, uh, what, what is planking? Let, let, what's planking? Let's get that out of the way because the chief was talking about that in the green room. So. Joe, show me what plank no, is. No, please don't show me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, at least we got him on the spot anyway. Oh, wait, you were really all state? Yes, sir. In basketball? Yes, sir. You could shoot the three? Yes. Okay, all right. You got some credentials to prove that? The yes. chief wants to know that. Well, good. We got a baseball player, a basketball player, and a football player. Yeah, football. We got it all rounded <laughs> we, up. We got it all ready to go. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to talk, first of all, let's take a break. When we come back, a lot to talk about, and we're going to open up. Night Out Against Crime. It's all next. Don't go away. <laughs> 